line of missing any keys. They have Patricia on the key ring.
How many of y'all glad that you came into the house of the Lord? Are you about ready to have church tonight? Are you about ready to have church tonight? If you're ready to have church tonight, give God a hallelujah praise in the house. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Let's give the Lord some praises in the house tonight. Let everything that has breath Praise ye the Lord. Please remain standing. Please remain standing. In Psalm 95, you will, sign, you will find this reading. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the, to the Lord, to the rock of our salvation. Amen. Amen. We will now go into our part of the service, which is our worship time. Right now we have come forward with um, Dr. Kevin Shepherd. He'll be doing the scripture. Then we have invocation by Reverend Clyde Bennett, a selection. And then we have Pastor Gaithers come forward and do the offertory prayer. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Open the selection, yeah. You, you may be seated.
Let the church say amen. amen. We'll now come forth with our scripture reading by Reverend Kevin, Kevin Shepherd, pastor of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Following him will be Reverend Clyde Bennett, Zion Hill Baptist Church, another selection. Then we have our offertory prayer, which will be given by Pastor Gaithers. And the introduction of the speaker will be done by our former moderator, Dr. Jamie Graham. Let the church say amen. amen. If you are able to stand, if you will, stand with us as we read our holy writ for this evening. Romans chapter 1, beginning at that 8th verse from the English Standard Version. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is proclaimed in all the world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I mention you always in my prayers, yes. asking that somehow by God's will I may now at least succeed in coming to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. That is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. We have read Romans chapter 1, verses 8 through 17. Let us pray. When all of my people will call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then when I hear from heaven, I will come and heal their land. Father God, it is once again that we come. Lord, we come tonight just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for I really rising upon this morning. Lord, that the sheep were not our cooling boat. But then, Lord, you was by our side all throughout this day. Let no harm or danger came upon us, Lord. And then you saw it fit, Lord, for us to come right here, oh God, one more time. Yeah, yeah. Oh God, we come now to lift up your name because you said if you be lifted up, you will draw all unto it. Lord, tonight we need to be drawn closer to you, Lord. So send, oh God, the Holy Spirit the guiders and the directors, oh God. Then, Lord God, send down a double portion of your anointing. Because, Lord, it's your anointing that breaks every yoke. It's your anointing that makes preaching easy. It's your anointing that makes worship easy. So, Lord, we thank you tonight. Thank you, God, and Heavenly Father, for... Every class, oh God, and every teacher tonight, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, because, Lord, you are God of your word. You promised that you would never leave us, nor would you ever forsake us, Lord. So continue, God, to pour your blessing out on this Gethsemane Association, Heavenly Father. God, that we may walk together, talk together, oh God, love together, and hold one another, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God bless this church and this family. Lord, bless 
Oh God, Heavenly Father, the pastor tonight, oh God, bless your man's servant who's going to break the bread of life tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. God, may your healing power go out wherever it's needed tonight. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Most of all, Lord God, help us to not believe, oh God, the way we came. But when we walk out the door, we say, did not Jesus show up tonight and show it out in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we be so careful now to give you all the praise, give you all the glory and all the honor. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. down to our offertory. Excuse me. Yeah, selection, I'm sorry. Selection and offertory. Then we go into the introduction of our speaker by Dr. Jamie Graham. Amen. <laughs> Oh, 
the morning, I saw a friend. He needed me when I walked in. I said he was a woo 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 given unto us. Amen? Now, I, I, I don't, I'm not going to beg for your last penny, but I'm going to ask you to give an offering that will be pleasing unto the Lord. You know what will be pleasing, you know what you can afford. Amen? I ask you to give your very best offering and let Lord move on your heart. For I do believe God gave his very best out there on Calvary's mountain. There on Calvary, someone suffered and died for you and for me. And I ask you to give an offering unto the Lord, being thankful what he has given unto you. But before you give that offering, I'm just a little different than the number of most preachers. I, at New Faith, I like people to do, make a little noise before they give to God. Because if you can make a little noise before you give, you understand that giving is a time of praise because God has been good to you. Uh, you've been able to pay your light bill, your rent, uh, your car note. You got clothes on your back, food on your table. Give God a hand praise. Thank God for what he's done for you. You got good health. Thank God. 
For God is worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. Yeah, we got to thank God and be joyful about giving. Amen? So if you don't mind, let us all stand. Those on my right, turn to your left. Those on my left, turn to your right, face the middle aisle. Just turn and face one another. There you go, like that. There you go. Amen. Amen. And follow the directions of the ushers. Thank you so very much.
Let us all stand. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given unto us to give back. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to open our hands and to bless this place. Dear Lord, we ask you to continue to bless our hearts and our minds. Continue to bless those who wanted to give but did not have. Help us, O oh Father God, to be the givers that you have called for us to be, that you are lifted up and you have given all praise. In the precious mighty name of Jesus, O oh Father God, amen. Amen. Before we do our introduction of our speaker, I'd like for you all to be, become very familiar with our Congress. Our president is Pastor Henry Edmonds. Would you please stand? Amen, amen. Our vice president is Pastor Michael Baber. Baker, who's not here tonight, and our Dean of Congress is Dr. Abrams. He's here tonight. And I'm your assistant dean, but I'm so thrilled that we have a great team here. Amen. And I would like to introduce you all to our moderator, Dr. William Butler. Walter, excuse me, Dr. Walter Butler. Amen. Amen. I'm about to get it right before Sunday, ain't it? Amen. Amen. With no further ado, we now have the introduction of our speaker by our former moderator, Dr. Jamie Graham will come forth. Let's, let's receive him. Amen. 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 Good evening. Dr. Harrison, our presider, president, uh, moderator Butler, President Edmonds, and your cabinet. And I want to commend you on a wonderful, wonderful uh, March workshop. Amen to President Chandler, her cabinet, pastor and past moderator, uh, Ezel, my great friend and brother, to uh, pulpit participants, all pastors and Christian workers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we stand tonight to introduce to some and present to others this great principal preacher in the Reverend Dr. Charles Pratt. How many know that faith comes by hearing and hearing? by the word of God. Well, we got a little faith last night with a great preacher. Amen. And we got another great preacher in the house tonight by the name of a man, Reverend Charles Pratt. He is somebody's preacher. He is a preacher's preacher. He's also a teacher at heart. He has been teaching in the National Congress for many, many years, uh, National Baptist USA Incorporated. He's married to the lovely evangelist uh, Evelyn Pratt, uh, have two children. Uh, he is a hospitable man. Uh, we were able to go up in uh, the north uh, to have a men's conference uh, during my tenure, and he rolled out the red carpet uh, for the men of Gethsemane. He is also the pastor, the eminent and efficient pastor for 26 years of the Gethsemane Baptist Church, Chester, South Carolina, where this association was birthed and came out of. And we certainly praise God for his leadership. So after the singing of this great choir, uh, the next voice you will hear that of my great friend and brother. Let us not sit in our tent doors and judge him, but let us say amen, amen. to the word of God. Amen. Hear he him, Dr. Charles Pratt.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, can we give God some praise tonight, everybody? Let's praise the Lord, for he is worthy. Come on, don't sit on him, but let's give God praise. He's worthy. Come on, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Hallelujah, the Lord is worthy. Hallelujah. Truly giving honor to God, to all the ministers, the pastors here. Hallelujah. And we give honor to the presence of the Lord that is in this place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing this short little sermonic hymn. And if you know it, I'm going to ask that you sing it with me. Amen. Amen. The song says, there are some things. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I may not know. There are some places that I cannot go. Can I get a witness? Oh, but I am sure of this one thing. And then one of the verses says, I cannot tell just how you felt when Jesus took. Can I get a witness? Your sin sins away. Oh, but that day. in here tonight have you found anybody can do you like the Lord have you found anybody can treat you better than Jesus I know you love your husband I know you love your wife but I found out can't nobody 
to me better than Jesus. Come on and give God a praise if you will. Thank God for, amen, that selection by Minister Omar from a church. I thought you had to work tonight, my brother. <laughs> so glad to have you here. Thank God for some of those that came from Gethsemane. Thank God, first of all, for, amen, our moderator. Amen. God bless you, Dr. Baker. Come on, give God a praise. Butler. Butler, amen. Praise God. And the dean, amen, Dr. Armand. Come on, Edmund. Amen. Give God a praise. I, I hadn't... I hadn't seen y'all brothers in a while. <laughs> but nevertheless, we thank God for your cabinet. We thank God for these ministers that uh, arrest us in the office uh, uh, up here in the pulpit. We thank God for our former uh, deans. We thank God for our former moderators. Amen. Thank God for the angel of this house. Amen. Dr. Ricky Ezel. Come on, give God some praise for him. Amen. Dr. Graham and all these ministers. Amen. God bless you, Brother Epps. Amen. I'm sorry I didn't get to get to your wife's homegoing service, but I, you have my condolences as I talk to you. God bless you. Be encouraged. We thank God for this privilege and this opportunity to have to stand here in the Gassimi Congress of Christian Education March workshops. I served as the assistant dean, the dean, and then I served as the president. And as Dr. Graham said, I've been teaching. I taught in the state convention many years. And amen. Praise the God of Congress. I taught, been teaching in the Congress in the National Baptist Convention for 24 years as of this year. So I thank God for the open of doors that God have granted unto me. Thank God for my dear friend, Jimmy Floyd, a longtime friend, came with me from Gastonia. We thank God for having C. Deacon, Van, Deacon uh, Vance. He's the chairman of our Deacon Board, his wife, amen, and one of the presidents, one of our choir, Sister Laurie and Sister Wilson back there and Sister amen Dent, thank god for you coming amen praise god it is so hard to get people to come in the evening when we got to go so far away but we thank god for their faithfulness how many know god desires for us to be faithful amen and there is a reward that is going to be given to us as people of god now her soul is happy amen holy ghost jumping happy to be here amen praise god we've been traveling about an hour in about 45 minutes to get here but nevertheless i thank god for you, my brothers and sisters, we don't plan worry your patience much long. If you say amen, we'll get out of the way. If you don't say amen, we might be a little lengthy. Amen. Preaching and amens go together. But those of you that have your Bible, turn with us to the book of Chronicles, a message that we gave to our church a few weeks ago. Amen. Praise God. It was just fitting for the theme here in our Congress, authentic worship, worship that evangelizes people for God. And we want to piggyback on that and talk about praise and worship, if you will allow me. Notice, amen, the book of First Chronicles, chapter 16, verses 23 through 36. When you find it, please stand in reverence and respect to the word of God. For the Bible says, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Because in him we live and move and have our beings, and without him we be like a ship without a sail. But how many know that with him we can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens us? And it's good to know that no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper, but every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. God has given us the authority, the power, the dunamis, the exercise, the ability to pull it down and tramp it up on our feet. And because of all that, there is a word from the Lord. From 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 23 through 36, when you finally shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And the word of God for the people of God. Sing unto the Lord all ye earth. Show forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory amongst the heathens. His marvelous works amongst all nations. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods with the little g of the people are idols. But the Lord is the one that made heaven and the earth. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord ye kindness of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. He says, bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The earth, the world also shall be stubble. And that is stubble. And it shall not be moved. 
Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let men say amongst the nations, the Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice and all that is therein. It says, then shall the trees of the wood sing out at the presence of the Lord because he cometh to judge the earth. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. And I say ye save us, O God, our salvation. And gather us together and deliver us from the heathens. That we may give thanks to thy holy name. And glory in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people of God said, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Look at your neighbor. Grab him by the hand before you be seated. Be generous and kind and look at the one beside you and smile at him. And some of you ain't smiled all night, but look at him and show all 32 teeth. If you ain't got 32, just smile with what you have and look at him and say, Neighbor, I love you with the love of God. And you can't do anything about it. But if you ain't going to heaven, you got to love me also. God has a word for you. And that word is my praise. And my worship is authentic. Now look at somebody and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but my praise and my worship is authentic. Now come on and give God a praise if you will. So glad to see Dr. Jeter with me. Amen. Praise God. Here He came to our church a few weeks ago and amen. Praise God. Thank God for him being there. God bless you. And thank God for all these ministers. Amen. The president of a ladies auxiliary. Amen. I thank you. you. You still the president? Who's the president now? Okay. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Don't want to forget anybody and oversee anybody. But notice here, our praise and our worship as people of God ought to be commonly. It should be something of a norm. Every time we gather here into the house of God, it's not to be, amen, to be seen, not to be recognized, not to be praised, not to be worshipped. But we're here for one express purpose. And that purpose is to glorify God. Somebody say amen. Yeah. That's why Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Not only is it the house of prayer, it's the place of deliverance, the place of worship, it's the place of praise. Amen. That's why David got excited. He said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Well, he knew everybody wouldn't praise the Lord, Dr. Graham. That's why he said, we'll let the redeem of the Lord say so. In other words, if anybody ought to have a right to praise God, it ought to be the people of God. Those that he have washed in his blood. Those that he have brought out of darkness into the light, marvelous light. Those that he have changed, amen, the way you walk, the talk, and the way you were living. We got a testimony, and it should be easy for us to give God glory. Can I get a witness in here? And so therefore, my brothers and sisters, when you look at this text in Chronicles, we see that David, amen, the king of Israel, the righteous king of God, a man after God's own heart. The Bible says that he was preparing to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to Jerusalem. The Bible lets us know that it had escaped uh, Jerusalem through, amen, the Philistines, and then it ended up at Obed-Edom's house. And, amen, what David realized that while, amen, it was in the Philistines' hands, it brought a curse to them. In other words, because they didn't have a right, amen, to have something that belonged to the people of God. But when Obed-Edom got it at his house, the Bible lets us know that Obed-Edom's house became blessed. Do I have a witness in here? And so therefore, he was blessed because the presence of God was in the Ark of the Covenant. And when we look at the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God with his people. Can I get a witness in here? And so therefore, David realized that the Ark of the Covenant need to be back in Jerusalem. So he was preparing to bring the Ark back to the place that it belonged. We are my brothers and sisters. Anytime God's presence is with his people, God will bless them. Anytime God's presence is with the child of God, God will do exploits in their life. Do I have a witness in here? And so David realized that it was time to bring the ark back to Jerusalem. 
And so therefore, my brothers and sisters, because of this ark of the covenant coming back to Jerusalem where it belonged, amen, it was high time. It was time for the people of God to celebrate. It was a time of praise. It was a time of worship, which was commonly amongst the people of God. Because God, amen, is a spirit. And the Bible says they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Do I have a witness in here? And in order for worship, amen, of God to take place, one must have his spirit. Y'all didn't hear what I said. In order for true worship, in order to, for true praise to take place, amen, one must, amen, be a custodian of the word of God and the spirit of God living in their souls. I, I can't get no help up in here. But in order for you to worship God in spirit and truth, you've got to have his spirit, amen, and then you've got to know the truth, Amen. And so therefore, that means in order for you to have the spirit, you must have now went through the stages or the steps of salvation. It's not a natural birth. It's a spiritual birth. It is a supernatural birth. And I want you to know the moment that you confess Jesus Christ with your, in your heart, and in your heart, and confess him with your mouth, and you invite him into your heart, you repent of your sins, and ask him to come into the well in your heart, your spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Paracletus moves and makes resident on the inside of your sanctified soul. Do I have a witness in here? And so therefore, in order for us to really worship God, we got to have his spirit and we got to know the truth. That's why the Bible says in John 8 and 32, he says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And who the Son sets free, the Bible says he is free indeed. Look at your neighbor and say, I thank God I'm free. Thank God for what Martin Luther King in the Civil Rights Movement, but that didn't make us free. The only thing that made us free is the Son of God. So therefore, true worship. And Jesus told the woman at the well, she said, my father and our forefathers worship God. Amen. On this mountain. And Jesus told me, he said, they did worship, but they did not know what they were worshiping. And I'm afraid there's a whole lot of people today, we're going through the motions, amen, and the formalities of worshiping God. But we're really not worshiping God because we don't, some of us may not have his spirit and some of us may not have the truth. But therefore, my brothers and sisters, we must realize that every day, amen, ought to be a day of thanksgiving. Because authentic worship and praise is commonly for the people of God. Somebody say amen. amen. And so therefore tonight, my brothers and sisters, at these March workshops, amen, tonight is a night of celebration. God's goodness and his power that has delivered us from the hands of the devil. We celebrate tonight because life is so much better and sweeter than it used to be. We celebrate and praise God tonight for the grace and mercy that's been extended toward every last one of us in here. We praise and worship God tonight for the overflowing of his spirit and the freedom that we now have to worship God in spirit and in truth. Do I have a witness in here? And so therefore, my brother and sister, we praise him for his wonderful works, amen, toward the children of men. We thank God and praise him and glorify him for the things that he has done for us. We thank God for who he is. And he is our creator. He is our maker. Amen. He is our Lord. He is the one. Amen. That we are serving tonight. Do I have a witness in here? And because of all that, God is worthy to be praised. Can I get a witness in here? Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God is worthy to be praised. Can I get a witness in here? He's worthy to be praised. And that's why David said, if I had 10,000 tongues, he said, I would not have enough of tongues to praise him with. Well, I found out God don't need a man or a woman that has 10,000 tongues to thank and praise him. He wants you to use the one that you got. And if you learn to use what you got and give God the glory and give God the praise, 
God will be well pleased. Do I have a witness in here? Well, the Bible lets us know, my brothers and sisters, that it's common for us to praise God. It's a normal thing for us to praise God. And praise and worship have been going on for thousands of years. Many men and women have got the connection that when praises go up, then blessings will come down. Have I got a witness in here? For one may ask the question, what does it mean to give God glory? And what does it mean to give God praise? Well, it means that we are grateful. It means that we are appreciative. It means that we are filled with gratitude toward the God of all flesh for the things that God has done. Do I have a witness in here? And so therefore we praise him in the past for the things that he has done. And then we ought to praise him in the presence for the things that he's doing right now. And then if we can praise him and honor him right now, it gets us ready for the future. For God to move in our life. Have I got a witness in here? In other words, if we, we were lost, he found us. And then when we were a sinner of that nature, he saved us and redeemed us. It is all here. He changed our walk. He, he changed our talk. He changed our lifestyle. And now we're called the people of God. Do I have a witness in here? And I'm so glad that he changed my walk. In other words, I don't live the same way I used to live. I don't go the same places I used to go. All because there's a change on the inside. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, it says, therefore, if any man, excuse me, sisters, if any woman be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. All things are passed away, and not some things, but all things have become new. Have I got a witness in here? Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Don't look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. You're looking at a miracle. You're looking at something God has done in my life. I can't worship myself. I can't get excited myself. I can't move by myself. I can't even go to bed at night because everything that's happening to me, I mean, oh God did. Every time I get up in the morning, I tell God, thank you. When I lay down at night, I give God the praise. But the songwriter says that when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I don't know about nobody else, but my soul, I said my soul, cries out hallelujah, thank God for saving me, I once was lost, but now I'm found, I was blind, but now I see, hey, hey, and I found out that you're giving the praise. If you're giving to glory, if you're praising for bringing you out, if you're praising for saving you, if you're praising for healing you, if you're praising for making a way, God will come to your rescue. For somebody said that he will be a doctor in a courtroom. Whatever you need, I mean, oh, God's got it. Whatever you want, God's got it. If you need more money, God's got it. But you got to praise him. You got to thank him. You got to lift him up. Because when praises go up, blessings will come down. And I don't know about nobody else, but I thank God for delivering me from a world of sin. I thank God for bringing me out and put me on a street that's called straight. Have I got a witness in here? Has he done anything for you? Has he ever healed your body? Has he ever made it whole? Has he ever made a way for you? Has he ever brought you out out of darkness into the marvelous light? Somebody say, look how far the Lord has brought me. He brought me from a long way. And I cannot help but to give him 
him the glory. I cannot help but to magnify him. Every time I come to the house of God, it ain't about me. It ain't about you. It ain't about how much praise. It ain't about people recognizing you. But it's about Jesus. And Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, he said, I draw all men unto me. I know he went to carry. He was lifted up between heaven and earth. But if we lift him up in praise and worship, God will. I said, God will. I said, God will. God will. Come to your rescue. Look at your neighbor and say, my praise and my worship is authentic. Look at somebody and say, my praise and my worship is real. It's genuine. Amen. It's faithful. Amen. It's real. I'm not playing. I come to church. I'm not for no show. Amen. But I'm about Jesus. It's all about him. The one that suffered, bled, and died. Oh, God. I got so much. Set, set, set down. I got so much more. I ain't seen it. Oh, Lord. Look at somebody and say, my praise and worship is authentic. There's four things I want to leave with you before I be seated. I know you've been in class. You're going you're gonna to eat natural foods and I know you're full. But I told the preacher back there, I say, I hope you sell it. This was a happy meal. There's four things that we ought to be reminded. As children of God, why we should praise him and worship him and thank him. The first thing, uh, we cannot hold our peace. Amen. 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 We have got to tell somebody about God's goodness. Don't, don't you know that was a part of the great commission going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? Teaching them to observe all things. Teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever come in your Lord, I'm with you always. Even. In the words, and then he said in Mark 16, 15 through 16, he said, go into all the word and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, I think when y'all put it on you, the program, you left off verse 16 through verse 19. I don't know if you've done that intentionally, but it goes with the rest of the verse. When it says these signs. We, we, we don't like to talk about the signs. Because he says, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized. Notice, you preach it, preachers. And when you preach it, when they believe, signs follow. He said, these signs shall follow them that you just preached to. Amen, amen. In other words, it's a body ministry. The preacher, the pastor, the bishop, the apostle don't hold a, a monopoly on the people of God. God wants this thing to be a body man. He's the head and everybody else, I don't care what position you got, you're a part of the body. So if the body got the power, if the head got the power, the body ought to have the power. Oh, y'all don't want to hear me. So he says, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. Notice, the ones that believe got the power to cast out devils. He didn't say run from the devil. He didn't say hide from the devil. Amen. He said, they will cast out devils. When the last time you cast out a devil in here? Well, matter of fact, let me ask you, when the last time you ran from the devil? Say, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they will speak with new tongues we're gonna get away from we don't believe that no more you know we don't believe in speaking in tongues 
Amen. But they did on the day of Pentecost. They did in Acts chapter 2. They did it in Acts chapter 10. They done it in Acts chapter 19. They all spoke with a heavenly language. Paul said, though I have the gift of tongues that I can I understand all mission, I speak in tongues more than you all. But he said, I would rather speak five words in my unknown, you know, in my name, long tank, language than to speak 10,000 words on the unknown tongue, except there be an interpreter. But he says, they will speak when you tongue. You can't speak in tongues when you lie. That ain't no new tongue. Before you speak in the heaven language, Dr. Graham, you got to get your language right. You got to speak the word of truth. You can't back by your lie and criticize and ostracize and expect to be able to speak it in tongue. You can't speak in tongue and hate your brother or your sister. So he said, these signs shall follow that believe in my name that you cast out there shall speak with new tongue. They shall take up serpents by accident. That don't mean we don't believe in being a snake handler. We don't believe in drinking deadly poison. But if somebody that can't stand you happen to put something in your food or put something in your drink, if you are right with God, if your praise is authentic, if your worship is authentic, if you got the paracletus, if you got the real Holy Ghost on the inside, he say it shall not hurt you. See, see, they won't let me preach in association. But I thank God I'm here tonight. So I'm going to hit, this might be my last time, Dr. Graham. It's just like when Paul, when Paul was on the island of Melitia in, in the book of Acts, when he was shipwrecked. Amen. The Bible says it was cold. It was a winter. And he was warming himself. He was gathering some sticks. And, and, and he was putting them in the fire. And when he threw them in the fire, a vapor, a viper, a poison serpent, a snake came out of the fire and latched on his arm. Well, what Paul done, he didn't get disturbed at the, at the virus that they're talking about. He, he didn't get upset, amen, and cancel all his meetings. He didn't get upset, didn't want to go to the basketball game or the baseball game. He didn't get upset, scared to go on a cruise because God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power and love in the sound man. We say we got the Holy Ghost. We say we got the power of God. We say God lives on the inside. When the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he or it that's in the world. But Christians are scared to death. When, this ain't it. But God has not given us a spirit of fear. But a power and love of the sound man. So when that, uh, Dr. Shepard, when that viper came and lunched on him. It was a poison serpent. And those barbarous people knew that he was going to die. Well, what Paul done, he just shook it off in the fire. In other words, he just trimmed it up on his feet. And as they watched him for hours, they knew he was going to fall dead. But then when he didn't die, amen, they thought that he was a god. Well, Paul said, I'm not a god. Amen. I'm a man just like him. They started worshiping him. They started glorifying him. He said, stand on your feet. I'm a man just like you. I'm not Jehovah Jared. I'm not Jehovah Eniskin. I'm not Jehovah Javon. I'm not Jehovah El Shaddai. But I'm a man just like you. And the reason why, because he had the real thing. He didn't mind praising the Lord. He didn't mind worshiping the Lord. So he says, then he said, we will lay hands on the sick. I hate to say it, preachers. This is an indictment against us. We don't even pray for the sick now. They can come into church sick, leave sick. Why? Ain't nobody took time out to pray for them. I know a lot of folk ain't got no faith today. They, they depend on Dr. Lizard and Dr. Buzzard and Dr. Roach now. They depend on their doctors. I hate to say it, everybody is on medication. Everybody got a, got a pill to get up in the morning, pill to lay down, pill to go to work, pill to do this, pill to do that. They, they, they're not, we're not trusting God like we used to. Amen. 
How much time I got? <laughs> but he say, they, the ones that believe us, will lay hands on the sick and they shall, no, they might recover. Either the word of God is a liar or something is wrong with us. And I'm just crazy enough to believe what the word says. It ain't my job to heal them. It's God's. That's his job. I just want to be a vessel that his spirit is trembling. I remember, I was thinking, hey, Sister Jack, I think you went with us and maybe Sister Feast. We went over to a church in Charlotte. First time there, they had a man there. I'd never been there before. Church was packed, running over with folk. and Went there for a church anniversary and and I was in the pastor study, never been there before. But when I came out, as I made the altar call after I preached, had a great time to preach. Man sitting on the front row, lift his hand, say, You want to be saved? I said, Come to the altar. The people says, He can't, he's crumpled. They've been bringing him to the church, picking him up, put him on the front row, roll his uh, wheelchair, and put it in the back. I didn't know that. But guess what? After we finished praying the prayer of faith, his faith, and Praying the prayer of faith. You know the Bible says the effectual favor prayer of a righteous man, it avails much. It will help, but God needs your faith also. And I had him to walk him up down the aisle. If you ain't never walked before, you know you're stammering. They walked him up and down the aisle. He come back, we pray for him. I say, take him back down the aisle. The Spirit of God was telling me this. Send him back down the aisle. He they walk, he walk in it. I bring him back. We pray for him again. I say, take him back down the aisle. And then he come back, and I say, now loose him. Let him go. And he sat there trembling. And I'm not telling no lie. But when this man started walking by faith, when he started taking steps, he was, he was shaking and he was crying, but he was walking by faith. But that lets me know that God's word is true. And then I went on up to uh, Philadelphia to run a revival in a place I'd never been before. And they had two, amen, crippled people that was in wheelchairs. Amen, Dr. Butler, and, and that one of them didn't have no legs, but another one had legs. And when I got ready to pray for them, I said, how many believe God is going to heal this man? Well, the saints, amen, they weren't that reluctant to say, amen, they, they know he was real crippled. They knew him from a long time. Well, I didn't. I said, whether you believe it or not, God is going to heal this man. And I want you to know that when we pray the prayer of faith over him, that man, faith grip, amen, the word of God. And amen, that when he started walking, he began to cry like a baby. And then he sat down in the chair. And I told him, the Spirit of the Lord just told me that you're getting a check every month. But you don't have to use this wheelchair now. You can find yourself a job. But that man said, I would rather stay in the chair because he did not want to go to work. But I'm so glad that the power of God is real. And when you praise the Lord and when you worship the Lord, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what trials you have. It doesn't matter what burdens you have. If you just trust in the Lord, and lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him first and he will he'll direct your path God is still a healer God is still a savior God is still a way maker God is still a bridge of troubled waters do I have a witness in here just look at your neighbor just one more time and shake your neighbor's hand and say neighbor I don't know about you, but I've learned down through the years that the Lord has been good to me. And I've learned that when I praise him, something is going to happen. When I lift him up, something is going to happen. When Peter and John went to the temple to our prayer, the Bible says that the church was going to pray. And at the beautiful gates, they found a man that had been laying for a long time. He had been laying from his mother's womb. And he looked at Peter, and he looked and expected to receive something. He was saying, arms, arms for the poor. But Peter fastened his eyes on him and said, look on us, because silver and gold have I not. But such as I have, I give it unto thee in the name 
your team rise up and walk. In other words, they was two pro preachers going to the house of prayer. They didn't have no money, but they had power with God. The difference between the church then, they had power and didn't have no money. But the church today got plenty of money, but ain't got no power. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, my praise and worship is authentic. Come on and give God a praise. Let's give the Lord some praises in the house. I don't know about you, but I, I have really been fed tonight. I was fed last night. Now I'm overfed tonight. Amen. Amen. Oh, amen. This is our time now. Pastor Pratt has preached from the depths of his heart. If there's anyone in here who have not accepted our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, this is your time now. As the choir sings, I love him. I love Yeah, let us all please stand if you're able to stand. I That need a closer walk with the Lord. There may be something going on in your life. There may be a burden that you're carrying. There may be a trial that you're going through. There may be a sickness that you're battling with. I want you to know that there's still a bomb in Gideon. God is still a healer. He's still a deliverer. The Bible said, call upon me in the days of trouble and I will deliver you. But when I deliver, you got to glorify me. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things that you desire. It's going to be added to you. If you're here tonight and you desire prayer for any purpose, any reason. It doesn't matter what you're going through. The Bible says, cast thy burdens upon the Lord and he will sustain you. He says, cast thy curls upon him because he curls for you. Come on, give God a praise. God bless you, doctor. Glad to see you, man. I can't remember his name, but I remember when he was working on your, amen, your a doctors of some degree. Amen. I took part and thank God for you, man. God bless you, Brother Epps. We there be another one. You lose our prayer. Whatever you need from God. God bless you, Dean. God bless you. We there be another one. The Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may find help in the time of trouble, in the time of need. Amen. Whatever you need, whatever you desire, it's yours for the action. He says he will not withhold no good thing from them that walk upright. He said that he would give us the desires of our heart. It doesn't matter what you stand in need of. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what sickness. God is still a healer. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chest of my peace was upon him. And with those stripes, 39 save one, we are healed. That's the present tense. Isaiah said we were healed. Past ten, past ten, and Peter and present ten, and Isaiah, we are here. We were here. We've gotten away from believing God for healing. We've gotten away from trusting God for our deliverance. Jairus's daughter lied at home at the point of death, and he heard about Jesus, and he came, Amen, and found Jesus. He said, "Listen, if you will come and lay your hands on my daughter, my daughter shall live and not die." And while Jairus and Jesus was going to Jairus' house, there was a woman that had an issue of blood for 12 long years. The young girl was 12 years old, and the woman had an infirmity for 12 long years. She had went from doctor to doctor, spent all she had, didn't get no better, but only grew worse. Well, guess what? Ain't nothing changed. It's still happening today. I love him. I 
for doctors, but they just give us pills to manage our problems, to suppress it. But then the side effects create us more problems. And we need to wake up and go back to the old landmark. And we're singing oh. now. How I love Jesus. Anybody in here loving tonight? Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, because he first. Let that song saturate. Saturate itself in your heart. Oh, how I love him. Oh, how I love Jesus. Everybody say, Oh, how I love Jesus. Do you really love him? Oh, 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 how I love Father God, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we come to you tonight. Thanking you, Lord, for the power of your word. We know that your word did not go out void, but it has compassed what you have sent into the hearts and minds and to the earth to accomplish the day. And God, we know that your word is going to bring forth fruit, amen, that's going to manifest itself in your people's life. Because God, we know that your word is power, amen. It has healing in it. It has deliverance. Even in the Bible, in Isaiah, in, in Psalm, you say you sent your word to heal them and deliver them out of all their troubles, out of all their afflictions. So God, we speak a word over your people right now. Whatever they're going through, whatever troubles, whatever trials they're having, whatever burdens they can, cast them, we cast our burdens upon you. And you say that when we cast our burdens upon you, you would it sustain us, God. So God, we cast all of our cares upon you, God, because we know that you care for us. Because we know that the devil walk about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he made about. But God, you told us to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in your work. For as much as we know that our living and our labor is not in vain. So God, right now, your children here, your people that love you today, those that are, are authentic in their worship, in their praise, in their lifestyle, in their giving, in their support. God, we ask you to do something in all of our lives right now. In the precious name of Jesus, we come against every sickness, every disease. We bind the hand of the devil. We bind the works of the devil. Because Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, which is poverty, sickness, and death. And God, we take authority over everything that's not like you. So God, we ask you to heal, deliver, and set free. Encourage, inspire, motivate, lift up where your people belong. Take us out of lowly bar. And put us in a lane of praise and worship. Because we know that when we praise you in advance. The blessings of the Lord will come down. Healing will come down. Restoration will come down. Deliverance will come down. Salvation will come down. So God we thank you right now. And by faith we receive everything. That you have for your people. And what you have for us. Can't nobody else take it from us. There ain't no demon or devil in hell that can take it from us. Because you told us you give us power to tread upon serpents. And if we be doers of that which is good, by no means nothing would do us any harm. God, we receive it today. We receive healing. We receive restoration in our bodies right now. We receive everything that is promised to us in the word of God. And we stand on your word and we stand on your promises. And God, we claim them for ourselves. You told us to have that God kind of faith, that same kind of faith that Abraham had. He called those things that be not as though they are ready. When they got, he got ready to take Isaac, his only begotten son, he seen in a vision that you was going to have to raise him from the dead. And so God, right now, we speak the word of faith. Because you said faith comes by hearing, hearing come by the word of God. So let us walk in liberty. Let us walk in freedom, God. 
You say we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. You say this is the victory that overcomes the world. You say great is he that is in us, that he that's in the world. You say we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. We're not victims, we are victorious. We're not defeated. We got the victory. So God, we thank you right now. We receive it by faith right now. In the mighty, matchless, marvelous, majestic, wonderful name of Jesus. If you can believe God, clap your hands and praise him in advance. Praise him like you got what you want. Praise him like he brought you out. Praise him like he made a way for you. Come on, you can do better than that. When praise is going up, blessings will come down. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You don't mind let's give dr prayer a hand clap of praise amen before we call him back up before we call dr prep back up to give us the benediction i would like to extend this time for our president of congress or our moderator or dean to give their closing remarks before we do the benediction. Dr. Ezel, we just want to say thank you once again, this great angel of this house, your wonderful host, and wonderful man of God. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Did we not Oh, come on, we can do better than that. Did not our hearts burn as the man of God preached by the way? Certainly we have been electrified tonight uh, with certainly evangelistic excellence. And God has spoken of you talking about old time religion. It is the simplicity of the gospel that many times reminds us that sometimes we have kind of got so educated we have gotten away from the old landmark right. and of course that's not to criticize uh, education but oh my my I tell you he put it just where we can get it amen uh, we don't want to worry your patience again we thank God for the angel of this house and of course all of, to our moderator and his cabinet which uh, certainly we are a part of as the Congress we ask that you invite someone, all of the classes. Uh, of course, we'll continue tomorrow, same place, same time. And uh, we thank Dr. Harrison. He's doing a wonderful job. Moderate.